and welcome back. <laughs> I should be saying that to myself. It's been forever and a day since I did any kind of YouTube videos. And as it would happen, the first one I put up since my long absence doesn't even have anything to do with microscope. That's because I found a new love. And no, this is not beer, it's iced tea. I'm being a good boy. Stuttered that one out. I'm being a good boy. More or less. I found a new love for a new branch of science. Something that I've been curious about, I guess, all my life, but I only just now, I don't know why it took me so long, I only just now decided to explore it. Allow me to introduce you to Project Arcturus. This little honey is a photomultiplier tube scintillator. Yes, it's a radiation detector. It's not just useful for that. Originally, I wanted to um, create something that would do radiation and faint light at the same time so I could... Maybe I should just put that back so that I could uh, do you know, kind of like starlight listening and um, radiation listening at the same time. It doesn't work that way. I suppose it could be made to work that way, uh, but I'm not going to get into theory right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just tell you on what this does really quickly. Now, first, a look inside. You'll notice that it looks like <laughs> it should look like a cookie tin with a garbage bag rubber banded to it, and that's essentially what it is. It's two garbage bags, um, double thickness. They've been folded in fours. 55 gallon bags or something? I don't know, 35, whatever it is. Um, folded in fours, both of them, and then rubber banded it over the top. At first glance, I gotta work quick because goddamn YouTube and their short times. Uh, over to the side here is the Bertan brand uh, negative one kilovolt power supply. I have it cranked down to about, or up I guess, to about, um, I don't know, 750, maybe 800. I think at last uh, check it was 797. Keeping it low, even though these tubes can withstand very high voltages, like, uh, say, 1300 volts, I think I saw somewhere, maximum working voltage, even though they can withstand that, it's not good for it because, it's not good for the project, because um, you get a lot of crackle noise, or at least that's what I'm getting. It's like something is arcing somewhere. And I haven't figured out what, haven't had enough time with it. This has been all in the last few days I've been doing all this. Um, you know, the really deep part, because i got all the parts to do it, finally. Anyway, quick tour. Check this out. You're going to love this. I better set this down for a moment. Get that on there. Okay. Pull that off and try not to make a mess. And and electrical tape everywhere. They say duct taped is like the universal fix it for everything, right? The duct tape at times is too strong, too tight, and electrical tape is easier to get off of things once it's stuck on and doing experiments. That's what you need. You need something that can be taken off just as quickly as it can be put on, hopefully. It's not quite as simple as all that, but... Okay, check it out. Ah! The most important part of this whole thing. Right there, that black tube. That is a 1P21 RCA photomultiplier inside a beautiful machined aluminum housing. The thing is gorgeous. In so many ways. Um both of which I got as a single unit from eBay. Thank you, eBay. I forget the name of the seller, but he knows who he is, and he's awesome. Anyway, uh, yeah, very nice. I took the uh, time to do electrical tape around there, 
where the two pieces join that allows you to turn the uh, rotate the tube just a little bit the two pieces and then lock it in the position for best sensitivity I believe it came from a PET scanner but I'm not really sure whatever that crystal almost for a fact this is a barium fluoride crystal almost for a fact came from a PET scanner I got that on eBay as well um, this down here is the amplifier board it's a OP what is it OPA 637 uh, op amp chip very nice chips I love them um, low noise high performance uh, just just a simple single op amp dealy do it's not that complicated at all you can throw one together with a with one of these uh, breadboards in like no time um, yeah. high voltage power supply the amplifier the whole thing ended up requiring not one not two but three wall warts to run the whole mess pain in the ass but it gets it done uh, the power supply unfortunately requires about 26 volts give or take to uh, run it that's why I needed two for that and then of course um, a single one to run the uh, amplifier separately the whole thing works very simply um, the photomultiplier picks up faint flashes of light coming off the crystal which are generated by alphas, betas, and gammas that strike it creates a faint flash of light photomultiplier tube picks that up sends it to the amplifier and then the amplifier sends it out to my computer's line input for uh, listening works kind of a lot like a Geiger um, supposed to be more sensitive though I wouldn't know I don't own a Geiger counter so there you go um, anyway I thought it wouldn't work with barium fluoride crystal worth a damn as it turns out it does it works quite well I think because barium fluoride um, emits two bands worth of flashes scintillations when exposed to radiation one is in the uh, UV at like what is it 220 nanometer and uh, the other is closer to the purple at like 350 or something like that nanometers and I think it's that uh, longer wave longer duration spike at 350 or whatever it is that is being picked up by the photomultiplier and processed that's my guess because uh, 1p21 doesn't do ultraviolet worth a goddamn really the curve falls off. Uh, it's very much a visible light kind of sensor. Um, how much time? Oh, I'm about out. I'm going to have to do this into two-parter, I think. Uh, yeah, why don't I do that? Make this part one, and then I'll follow up with part two. One quick word about photomultipliers. If you were ever a kid like me that fooled around a lot with phototransistors and photodiodes, uh, you know how interesting it is to hook up a photodiode to an amp and listen to fluorescent lights and whatnot. When you get serious about that and you start dealing with better and better parts, suddenly you realize something. Semiconductor photosensors, no matter what they are, aren't worth a damn. There's too much noise. Photomultipliers fix that problem. Back in video number two.